Hey there besties. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're continuing our recap of the manhwa like husband, like son. If you're new to this series, check the description below for links to previous episodes. Lastly, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy the video, it really helps our channel grow. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. I don't want to give birth to a child. What's this place? Sophia thought, lying in a hospital bed, clearly in labor. Continue pushing, we can see the head already. Put some more effort, the child will be out, a group of doctors encouraged her. It's out, a doctor said. This is my child, she thought, as a doctor held the crying baby. The doctor handed Sophia's baby to the strange woman. Doctor? Why is that person taking my baby away? Sophia shouted amidst pain as she saw the woman walking away with her baby. She noticed the doctors looking at her with an evil look. She chased the person but fell on her knees. Give my baby back to me, she cried, holding the woman's dress. The child is mine, he has nothing to do with you, Scram, said the strange lady, marching Sophia away. No, my child, that's my child, give me back my baby, she protested. Go deal with her, the woman instructed some men, who mishandled Sophia and tossed her into the pool. In that moment, she opened her eyes, returning to reality. She breathed a sigh of relief, looking visibly tensed. So that was just a dream. Why would I have such a weird dream, she thought. Miss Jen, you're awake, Marco said as he sat down by her bedside. Mr. Marco, why are you here? Why am I in the hospital? Sophia asked looking confused. You fainted at the police station when Sarah tried to hurt you earlier, explained Michael Zhang. Then our master Jen stopped whatever work he was doing and went to the police station to look for you. He was just in time to catch you as you fainted. That's why you didn't end up on the ground. Mr. Jen, Sophia said turning to face Marco, her face looking flushed. Good thing I caught you. Otherwise, if Miss Jen was to be disfigured from the fall, then I won't want you anymore, he tells her. Why are you just like a child when speaking, she tells him. Say, young Master Jen, can you and your young wife stop flaunting your love for each other? At least give some consideration to the feelings of a single man like me, Michael said. Enough nonsense. Find out what caused her to faint as soon as possible, Marco demanded. Master Jen, I am a shareholder and the president of this hospital. Since when did I become your private doctor? Michael Zhang said awkwardly. Private doctor? You're overestimating yourself, I've always treated you as a mule. Marco tells him. Michael is stunned by his insults. Damn it, I'm not going to do it today. Find whoever you want to do it, he says angrily. It's fine. If President Zhang is unhappy, I'll get someone to take over immediately, Marco said, unmoved by the offense his harsh words caused. Young Master Jen, you're so humorous. As a doctor, it's my duty to serve the public and heal the wounded, Michael Zhang said, looking delighted. Sophia watches them quietly. Here, Mrs. Jen, give me your hand. I'll take your pulse, Michael Zhang said reaching for her hand. Are you fit to call her Mrs. Jen? Michael asked kicking him from behind causing him to cry out in pain. Sophia's eyes open in amazement as she was shocked by Marco's kick. So sorry, Master Jen, did my ultimate perky but hurt your foot? Should I look at it too? Michael Zhang said, jesting as he rubbed his sore butt. Aya, it's already so late, I have to go fetch Roro. Let's go to the school quickly. Roro must be so anxious, Sophia exclaimed, checking the time on her phone. At the school, the couple stood at the entrance. The school looked deserted. Oh right, where's Sarah? Sophia asked Marco. She escaped, he tells her. Escaped? She asked, confused. Weren't there a number of bodyguards guarding me? Nobody called her? She asked. Why should we catch her? He tells her. Ah, isn't she trying to cause harm to me? Sophia asked him. Looks like Mrs. Jen needs more tonic soup to nourish her brain, he says. What? What do you mean? She asked looking shocked. It's not interesting to capture her immediately. Let her enjoy the feeling of running from the police. Make her jump at the sound of the siren. 
when her mental health is reaching the limit, then we'll send her to prison. Isn't that better? He tells her with an evil smirk. Mr. Jen, you're really too scheming, Sophia tells him as she got closer to him. Thank you for your compliment, Mrs. Jen, Marco tells her. Sophia, I hate you, little Rome shouted in anger. Ro ro. She called out in shock as she saw little Romeo angry. You made me wait here for so long, all because you're being intimate with the bastard daddy, he exclaimed furiously. Sorry, I was involved in an accident. I didn't mean to be late, Sophia told him, apologizing. Laya, you're just the same as the other women trying to get close to daddy. I thought something happened to you and I was so worried, but you were actually being intimate with daddy and forgot to fetch me. You don't love me like you say you do, you only love daddy, little Romeo said with an angry look. She called after him. Don't follow me. I hate you, he said, running away from her. Looks like young Master Jen is itching for a beating, Marco said with an angry look as he stood beside Sophia. Little Romeo didn't stop and walked away from them. You're a bad person too. I don't like you. I'm going to live with grandpa and grandma. I'm going to grandpa and grandma's and I don't want to see you guys again, little Romeo said upon reaching a vehicle. Ro ro. Sophia started, trying to explain and apologize. Let him go. He's only like this because you spoiled him too much, Marco told Sophia, holding her back from saying more. Little Romeo was driven off to the old Gen Manor. Upon arriving, little Romeo exclaimed, Grandma, my darling grandson. Io, little darling, why are you here today? I'm so happy, Grandma Jen said, hugging him. I came to accompany you, Grandma, because I know you missed me, little Romeo told her excitedly. My little darling grandson is the best, she told him, pecking his cheek. Here, I made all your favorites, she said, leading him to the dining table. She fed him, making him happy. Yo, Romeo is here today too? A man said, wheeling himself into the dining room, stunning them as they looked at him with fear. Oh, it's Matthew. You haven't eaten, right? Come have a seat and eat with us, Grandma Jen said, smiling. No, I've already eaten, Matthew replied. Romeo, come over here to your uncle, Matthew Jen said, stunning little Romeo. I have a present for you. Come up with me to get it, he told little Romeo. Okay, little Romeo said, his hand trembling as he appeared scared. No, I'm worried. I have to go with them, Grandma Jen said getting up from her seat. You'll only deepen Matthew's hatred like this, Grandpa Jen said, halting her. But, she began before being interrupted. Don't be hasty. We're at home, he won't dare to do anything to Romeo, he said confidently. What are you going to give me, uncle? Little Romeo asked his uncle, Matthew Jen. This, he said, handing him a toy. Wow, this is awesome, Romeo said excitedly. Do you like it, Romeo? Matthew Jen asked. Thank you, uncle, but why are you giving me a toy? Little Romeo asked. Because I like Romeo, just like grandpa and grandma do, Matthew told him excitedly. I heard from Mike that Romeo has a very beautiful lady friend recently. Do you like her? Matthew asked, looking concerned. I used to like her, but I don't like her at all now. I hate her. Little Romeo said with disgust, holding the toy. Why? Matthew asked. Although his sources had told him that the woman fetched Romeo from school every day and that Romeo seemed to like her a lot, why would he suddenly hate her, he wondered. Uncle, don't mention her in front of me. She's the same as those other bad women. She's only currying up to me just to get to my daddy. They are all bad people, little Romeo exclaimed, making Matthew Jen smile. Then does your daddy like her? He asked. Daddy doesn't like her at all. Little Romeo replied. Then who does your daddy like? Matthew asked. Hmm. All I know is he doesn't like me, Little Romeo said, looking downcast. He only knows how to be fierce to me, and you definitely won't tell me who he likes. Daddy is so annoying. I merely ate my breakfast a little slower last time and he, Little Romeo said, yapping about his ordeal with his father non-stop to his uncle. Matthew looked bored almost instantly as he watched him complain. Okay, it's getting late. Have a good rest, he said before leaving him. Okay, have a good rest too, uncle. Good night, little Romeo said, bidding Matthew good night. 
He dropped the toy almost immediately as his uncle left. Daddy, is Sweetie angry at me? Is she very sad? He asked, talking to his watch as he made a call to Marco Jen. She's okay, Marco told him. I've done everything you told me to. Are you sure that Sweetie will be able to come to Grandma and Grandpa's with us in the future? But since we are doing this for Sweetie's sake, then why don't we tell Sweetie and let her take part in this? Little Romeo asked. Hmm, she's too naive, she will spoil it for us, Marco told him. Marco, Sophia calls out to him as Marco walks into the room from outside. I could always make Roro happy easily after he got angry the last few times. He's so angry this time. I'm a little worried, she says, her face looking sad. It's fine. He's just spoiled by you, that's all. He'll be back in a couple of days and he'll be fine. Have some rest, Marco tells her, kissing her head. Okay, Sophia says softly before going to bed. Later that night, Sophia had a strange dream. I can't wait to see Wayne's expression during the wedding, she says, laughing as she wears her wedding gown. Chloe, thanks for being my bridesmaid, she says to Chloe. Sophia, congratulations. To ensure you'll be in your best condition today, I'll use tea in place of wine, Chloe says, coming closer as she holds two cups of tea. I wish you a blessed and happy life after marriage, and have a son early, Chloe tells her, handing her a cup. Thanks for your well wishes, Sophia says, drinking the tea. Chloe, I'm feeling a little giddy, Sophia says, holding her head as she starts to feel drowsy. Quick, bring her out from the back door, Mary Zhong orders, bursting into the room with two guards, stunning Sophia. What? What are you doing? Sophia protests, trying to resist, but she feels weak. Why am I suddenly so weak? She thinks, unable to fight back. Wait, you're really going to spoil her wedding? You won't hurt her, right? Chloe asks Mary Zhong, looking scared and pleading for Sophia's safety. Get out of my way. Shut up if you want to come into the Tang family, Mary Zhong snaps. Remember, Sophia escaped from the wedding and begged us to cover for her. Do not tell anyone what happened today, or you will never be able to come into the Tang family. I'll also give the order for the hospital to stop treatment for your mother immediately. Mary Zhong says harshly. Chloe, help me. Sophia screams, begging Chloe to save her as the men lead her away. Chloe is tossed into a room, helpless and terrified. What is this place? What did they do to me? I can't speak, Sophia thought, feeling a wave of fear wash over her. Are you sure it's this woman? If we got it wrong and Marco has an allergic reaction, you'll have to bear the consequences yourself, a strange woman said angrily to a guard. Yes, don't worry. I saw it myself. This woman accidentally ran into Mr. Jen's embrace that day. Master Jen did not show any discomfort or unhappiness, the guard reassured the strange woman. In that case, get out. This woman has such a good life, the strange woman sneered. Yes, the medicine's effect is wearing off soon, the guard added. Someone save me, Sophia thought, terrified. Sophia found herself in a room with a hot, unbearable atmosphere. Yeah, it's so hot. Hot, hot, I feel so uncomfortable, she murmured, leaning over to a man beside her. Whoever you are, save me, Sophia said, caressing his face as she blushed, unable to control her urges. Get off me, the unknown man said, pushing her hand away. Save me. I'm really uncomfortable, please save me, Sophia begged him, her desperation growing. Sophia huffed, feeling flushed and unable to control her urges in the dream. Fine, I'll grant your wish today, the man said, leaning towards her and getting on top of her. Who are you? What's your name? Sophia asked in the dream, caught up in the intense moment. Woman, you were the one who provoked me. Even if you want to back off now, it's already too late, he told her in the dream, intensifying the situation. Ah! Sophia exclaimed, suddenly waking up from her nightmare. Marco Jen was beside her, holding her. You had a nightmare again? He asked, concerned. I dreamt that I was being sold five years ago, Sophia said, her voice trembling. Sold? Marco asked her sounding shocked. Yes. I looked for Mary Zhong today and interrogated her regarding what happened five years ago. Maybe it's because I heard her say that subconsciously, and I almost dreamt the whole process of me being sold. But what's strange is that the person who sold me in my dream wasn't just Mary Zhong, 
but my good friend Chloe Song. I also dreamt of a woman and a man whose faces I cannot make out clearly, Sophia told Marco, trying to recall the vague images from her dreams. Could it be that these aren't just dreams, but memories I've lost? If that's the case, that man is the one who made me pregnant. But who is that woman whose face I can't remember at all? She pondered over her unanswered questions, looking tense. Is this what you meant when you said you gave birth before? Marco asked softly. Yes, and it was only today when I fainted that I dreamt of giving birth to a boy. I didn't know the gender of the child before, she explained. It's in the past now, Marco reassured her, pulling her closer. Mr. Jen, when you go back home tomorrow, please help me put in a good word in front of Romeo so he won't be angry with me anymore. And also, let him know that I really miss him, she pleaded, her hands clasped. Okay, go to sleep, he said gently. The next morning, Sophia greeted the butler. Young mistress, you're finally awake. Little Romeo has already called a few times looking for you this morning, the butler informed her. Really? Sophia said, smiling. Hello, is it Roro? She asks over the phone as she calls Romeo. Sviti! He exclaims, blushing. Ah, I almost forgot to put down the act, he thought, almost shocked. Don't blame me for not giving you a warning. Grandma has found a girlfriend for Daddy, and she wants Daddy to marry her. She's prepared to drug Daddy's food, and she doesn't care if Daddy likes her as long as she gets the deed done, he tells her. What? Sophia exclaims, the phone still against her ear. Is this what a mother would do to her own son? She thought. What do you mean by a what? If you have Daddy in your heart, then come quickly. Otherwise, after today, that woman will become my stepmother. Even though I hate you too, compared to her, I hate her more, little Romeo tells her. But your daddy doesn't want me to see his parents, she tells him. You listen to my daddy all the time, yet you don't care about me. Fine. I will not care about you in the future too, little Romeo tells her. Don't hang up, Roro. Fine. I'll listen and go see you. But I don't know, showing up at your grandparents' place uninvited doesn't feel right, Sophia says. That's easy, little Romeo replies. I'll arrange for us to meet at Yilda Mall. I'll bring grandma there, and it'll look like a coincidence. Who? What should I say when I see your grandma? Sophia asks. Just be yourself, little Romeo reassures her. Be myself, Sophia thinks, feeling a bit apprehensive as she hangs up the phone. At Yilda Mall, Sophia walked in, looking tense. I'm so nervous. I should have asked Shauna and Yo-Yo to come with me, she thought. Sviti, Sviti, someone called out, prompting her to turn. She saw little Romeo running towards her, arms open for an embrace. Roro, she exclaimed, happily hugging the boy. Are you surprised to see me, sweetie? Let me tell you, I came here with grandma, he said, pointing to his grandmother. Hello, Sophia greeted, turning to Romeo's grandmother. Eh? Your sweetie? Aren't you Mike's partner from that day? Romeo's grandma asked. Grandma, I was the one who made uncle take me and sweetie to the banquet that day because we were both uninvited, little Romeo said excitedly. Oh, I see, Grandma Jen said softly. This lady is quite elegant, she thought. Romeo loves you. He's always talking about you when he's back at my place. He's almost praising you to the skies, she told Sophia, smiling. Roro has such a sweet tongue. Of course, but sweetie is really very nice, he said, hugging Sophia, prompting Grandma Jen to be shocked. Roro had never been close to anyone since he was young. Who would expect him to be so close to her? She wondered. Your collar's crooked, Sophia said, adjusting Romeo's collar. This girl treats Roro very naturally. There are no signs of her being unnatural or trying to curry favor with him just like a mother's love and concern for her own child. Eh? Am I imagining things? The more closely I look at them, the more I think they look alike around the eyes. How should I address you? Grandma Jen asked with a smile. Hello, auntie. My name is Sophia. Sophia Tang. Sophia introduced herself. Yes, you are just like what your name suggests. May I ask if you're married? Grandma Jen inquired. Her hands clasped together. I am, Sophia said, smiling, 
What a pity, Grandma Jen said, holding her face. What a nice girl, and Romeo likes her so much. If only she could be my daughter-in-law, she thought quietly. Oh, nothing, she added, looking tense suddenly. Romeo, we've been out for quite a while. Let's go back. But Grandma, I can't bear to leave sweetie, he protested. Grandma Jen watched in amazement at little Romeo's protest. If Miss Tang doesn't mind, why don't you come back with us? She offered Sophia. Ah? Uh, to where? Sophia asked. Back to our home, of course, Grandma Jen replied. But, Sophia hesitated, thinking, Marco doesn't want me to go. If I go without his consent, he'll definitely be angry with me. Sweetie, come with us. My grandpa and grandma are very nice people, little Romeo said, clutching her hand. That's right, Miss Tang. If you have nothing urgent, then come back with us. It's rare for Romeo to be so close to anyone, Grandma Jen added, almost begging. Sophia tried her best to resist the urge to agree to her plea. Okay, since you don't mind, I'll go back with you then, Sophia said, finally caving into her request. Grandpa, my sweetie is here. Little Romeo said excitedly as they arrived at the Jen Manor. Slowly, Romeo. What if you fall down? Grandpa Jen asked, looking a bit scared as his grandson embraced him excitedly. Grandpa, she's the sweetie that I keep telling you about, little Romeo said, pointing to Sophia, who stood quietly watching the entire scene. Hello, Mr. Jen, Sophia said calmly, greeting Grandpa Jen. Based on my years of experience in the business world, this girl might seem nervous. But her behavior is very appropriate. She's a very good girl, Grandpa Jen thought as he observed Sophia's nervousness. Sweetie, come with me. I'll show you my treasure, little Romeo said excitedly, holding Sophia's hand and leading her away from his grandpa in a rush. Slowly be careful, she said, trying to slow down the excited boy. Romeo is actually so close to an outsider, Grandpa Jen thought in amazement, his wife standing behind him. Are you surprised? I was so shocked that my jaw almost fell off earlier. This girl's not bad. It's a pity she's already married, she told him softly. It's a good thing that Yuki is not bad either, even though Romeo doesn't like her. But he'll grow to accept her in a few years, Grandma Jen said with a sigh, her husband watching her calmly. I'm warning you, you better not cause any trouble during dinner, otherwise I'll not let you off. What's that look? Don't think I don't know that you're against my plan she said sternly, grabbing his shirt and looking at him with fiery eyes. Son, good luck, Grandpa Jen thought with a sigh as his wife held on to him. Meanwhile, Sophia soon ran into Yuki. Who's this woman? She's so beautiful, Sophia thought, looking puzzled as she met her for the first time. She's the sweetie that I love the most. Isn't she beautiful and gentle? Is someone feeling inferior after seeing sweetie? Little Romeo asked Yuki looking proud as he praised Sophia. Romeo, it's not good to be led astray when you're so young. Tell me, how am I inferior to your sweetie? Yuki asked, leaning forward towards him. No matter what, you're not as good as her. She's better than you in all ways. He said, not impressed by her defense. Romeo, don't be so rude, Grandma Jen said, suddenly stepping into the scene and prompting little Romeo's gaze. Grandma, chase her away quickly. I don't like her at all, he insisted. I'll have nightmares if I see her for too long, little Romeo said, pointing at Yuki. I used to think he was an angel sent from above. How I regret that, Yuki said, wiping sweat from her face with a handkerchief. Yuki, don't hold it against him. This little bastard's always like that. He's especially bad-tempered towards people he doesn't like, Grandma Jen said, apologizing to Yuki. Romeo, don't cause trouble she added with a warning, causing him to flinch. Humph, Romeo said rudely, running up the stairs. Roro, take care when going up the stairs. Don't fall down, Sophia said with a concerned look. In Romeo's room, Sophia shut the door behind her. Don't think that I've really forgiven you. I'm still angry, little Romeo told her, prompting her to say air in amazement. What's wrong with this kid? His mood swings are faster than flipping a book, she thought, looking perplexed. That was just an act to make grandpa and grandma like you. If you want me to not be angry at you, that's easy. 
You just need to chase that bad woman away from daddy and I'll forgive you, little Romeo told Sophia, his hands folded as he sat on top of his bed. But, what must I do to chase her away? Sophia asked him. Daddy's right, you're really too stupid, he said out loud in a disgusted manner. Just go straight to her and tell her to her face that Marco Jen is your man. Nobody can touch him other than you. Isn't that easy? He said bluntly. Roro, you're so cute when you're being serious, Sophia told him, smiling, which caused little Romeo to blush as he stared at her quietly. All you know is to laugh. What's so funny? He said, turning his face away, still looking red. Fine, fine. For Romeo, I'll work hard and do my best, Sophia said, still smiling at him. I've never seen a woman as stupid and annoying as you. I'm regretting letting you come here, he said rudely, still blushing. Sophia didn't utter a word. I'll go to the washroom, she said before leaving the room. Was I being overboard just now? Is Sweetie angry? Little Romeo thought, looking tense after Sophia shut the door behind her. What to do? What if Sweet is really angry? Little Romeo thought as he chased after her. He stopped, reaching for the door handle, then paused. No, I have to bear with it. After tonight, I'll be able to be with Sweetie openly. He thought, retreating from his chase. In the washroom, Sophia stared at her reflection in the mirror. Do not give up. I must make Roro forgive me. She told herself inwardly. Suddenly, someone appeared out of nowhere, frightening her. Did I scare you? Matthew Jen asked as he appeared before her. No, not at all. I just didn't notice you there, Sophia said with an innocent smile. Nice to meet you, Miss Tang. I'm Matthew, he said, introducing himself. You know me? Sophia asked, looking shocked. Matthew Jen looked at her with an awkward expression. How did you know Romeo? That kid seems naive and cute on the outside, but he's actually not easy to get along with. Sophia looked tense and perplexed. I met Roro at the hospital. Maybe it's because we share the same fate that he felt closer to me, she said calmly. Suffer from the same fate? Matthew asked, surprised. Yes. My mother passed away when I was young, and my stepmother didn't like me, so I didn't get much parental love when I was little, she explained. I'm sorry for making you remember your unhappy experiences, Matthew said, apologizing. It's fine, Sophia reassured him. It's usually easier for people with similar experiences to connect. So it makes sense for Romeo to be close to me. Matthew wondered if he was overthinking things as he gave Sophia a calm look. Little Romeo, watching from behind the door, looked stunned. Why is Sweetie with Uncle? Uncle is so fierce and scary. What if he hurts her? He thought, feeling scared. Little Romeo burst into the washroom, stunning both Sophia and Matthew Jen. Roro, Sophia thought, recognizing him. Romeo, don't be rude, Matthew Jen said angrily, turning toward little Romeo and causing the boy to sweat slightly from fear. Miss Tang, go quickly. Otherwise, this little thing is going to be unhappy again, Matthew told Sophia. Okay, by Mr. Jen, she said, bidding him farewell before leaving the washroom. Oh, hurry up. You're taking so long, little Romeo said, leading Sophia by the hand back to his room. Stay away from uncle next time, understand? He told her. Why? She asked, looking confused. You might not know, but the way he looks at me is super scary. He always looks so sinister, as if he's plotting something bad, he said, trembling with fear. Sophia couldn't help but feel tense as she sensed the boy's fear. Sweetie, I'm telling you. Don't run around by yourself next time, he told her as she looked away, keeping mute. Little Romeo stepped onto his bed and climbed it. If you meet uncle, try not to talk to him, understand? He said, rubbing Sophia's shoulder, causing her to laugh slightly. Oh, it's ticklish, Sophia said, laughing at little Romeo's touch. I'm telling you something serious here, he said with a serious look. But it's really very ticklish. Sophia replied with a wink. Oh, is that so? He he, then is this more ticklish than that? Little Romeo asked before tickling her even more. Sophia laughed out loudly. It's so ticklish. Please, let me off, she pleaded. No, I'll not let you go, 
he said with a mischievous look. In turn, Sophia tickled him back. Stop right now, it's so ticklish, he said, laughing loudly. What are you guys playing? I want in too, Yuki said as she burst into the room, causing them to stop and look at her in shock. They paused, sitting down with a serious look. Why did you stop playing the moment I came in? Don't be like this, let me join. Yuki pleaded. Go out, you're not welcome here. I don't want to play with you, little Romeo said coldly, folding his arms. How about I tell you my secret in return? She offered with a wink. Sophia felt tense, but little Romeo seemed uninterested in Yuki's offer. Then that depends on whether your secret has any value, he replied coldly. It's definitely valuable, Yuki said, coming closer gently. Let's hear it first then, little Romeo told Yuki. Your grandma has drugged your daddy's food tonight and wanted me to sleep with him. Then she wants me to be your stepmother, Yuki said with a smile. Is this girl's head filled with water? How could she just say the secret out so easily? Sophia thought, looking shocked. What kind of secret is this? I knew about it long ago, little Romeo said, looking unmoved. What? You already know about it? I thought only your grandma and I knew. That's no fun, Yuki said, looking unimpressed. Okay, you can go now, little Romeo said awkwardly, showing her the door. Yuki looked at him, unimpressed. Little rascal, trying to chase me away so quickly. Let's see how I deal with you today, she said as she tickled him. Stop right now, little Romeo said, laughing loudly as he rolled on the bed. Sweetie, quick, vanquish her for me, he said, prompting Sophia to go behind Yuki and start tickling her. They all laughed as they played together that night. Soon, they became exhausted and lay on the bed. Yuki touched Sophia's hand, prompting her to be on alert. I quite like you, so I've decided to give tonight's chance to you, she said to Sophia calmly, both of them looking exhausted. Who? Sophia said in amazement. We don't need your fake kindness. Even if you don't give the chance to her, my sweet can snatch daddy on her own, little Romeo retorted, standing up from the bed. Didn't your daddy teach you not to interrupt when adults are talking? Yuki shut him down quickly asserting her authority over him. I'll help you tonight, but there's a condition, she continued, standing up herself. When the deed is done, you have to play tickling with me once more, she said, winking mischievously at Sophia, who felt a pang of unease. Oh, that's right. I was here to get you guys down for dinner, Yuki said, shifting the conversation. Sophia, relieved for the interruption, responded, why didn't you say so earlier? Sophie exclaimed as they rushed downstairs to the dinning. I'm really sorry to keep everyone waiting, Sophia said as she arrived at the dining room, apologizing to Grandma Jen. As they arrived at the dining table, Sophia was surprised to see Marco there, pretending not to know her. It's fine, this is my son, Marco Jen. You've met him, haven't you? Grandma Jen asked with a smile as she introduced Sophia to Marco, unaware of their marriage. Sophia felt conflicted. Eh, so I have to act like I don't know him. I thought he'd be unhappy and chase me away, she thought to herself, observing Marco's feigned indifference. We've met a few times, Sophia said, blushing slightly. Okay, since everyone is here, let's tuck in. Grandma Jen declared cheerfully, prompting everyone to start eating. Miss Tang here, eat more. I don't know if the food today is to your liking, Grandma Jen said, placing some food onto Sophia's plate. Thank you, Mrs. Jen. I've never been a picky eater, Sophia replied gratefully. Yes, it's not good to be picky, Grandma Jen agreed with a smile. Suddenly, Marco leaned in touching Sophia's lap, causing her to choke on her food. Concerned, Grandma Jen asked, what's wrong? I'm fine, Sophia managed to say, coughing slightly. I drank the soup too quickly and some got into my windpipe. The soup's a little hot. Drink it slowly. Don't rush it. Grandma Jen advised gently, as Sophia smiled and blushed. It's not hot. I've never had soup as good as this, that's why I drank it a little quickly, Sophia explained cheerfully. Miss Tang not only looks sweet, but you have a silver tongue as well. Drink more if you like it, Grandma Jen encouraged warmly. Come often if you're free in the future. I'll make it for you. This is the soup that I make best. Grandma Jen exclaimed, 
laughing warmly. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Jen, Sophia replied politely. Stop it, Sophia thought to herself as she tried to focus on her soup. Sophia took out her phone and texted him. There are so many people here. Don't go overboard, she typed, messaging Marco discreetly. I don't understand what Mrs. Jen is talking about, Marco replied, continuing to rub her lap, causing Sophia to blush as she read his message nervously. Please conduct yourself properly, Mr. Jen, otherwise, I'll really get angry, she warned him in response. I didn't expect Mrs. Jen's temper to become shorter and shorter, but I advise you to save this energy for tonight, Marco replied teasingly. No need, I heard that Master Jen has a date tonight. Sophia texted back. I seem to smell a strong smell of jealousy. I don't think I can finish this meal anymore, Marco joked. Of course, you can't finish it, Sophia Jen hastily texted Marco back, there's still a sumptuous meal waiting for Mr. Jen tonight. I look forward to it. Remember to wash up properly, Mrs. Jen, Marco's reply came swiftly. Sophia sighed inwardly. Not only can I not fight with him in speech, I can't even beat him in text, she thought, feeling frustrated. Miss Tang, are you okay? You seem flushed. Have you not recovered from choking yet? Grandma Jen's concerned voice interrupted Sophia's thoughts, making her flinch as she noticed her own blushing cheeks. I'm really sorry, I need to go to the washroom. I'm fine, don't worry, Sophia assured Grandma Jen, standing up abruptly. Back in the washroom, Sophia rinsed her face, trying to calm herself. The drug Marco's mother had given him is evidently potent. The dinner had barely begun, yet Marco was already showing signs of arousal. If I don't intervene tonight, Marco and Yuki might actually. Sophia's thoughts raced, but she was interrupted as Marco stepped into the washroom without warning, leaving her in awe. Sophia stuttered nervously as Marco approached her. What? What are you trying to do? She managed to say. What does Mrs. Jen hope that I'll do? Marco replied softly gently placing his hand on Sophia's waist. Don't. Don't do anything hasty. This is the washroom, anyone could come in, Sophia pleaded, trying to maintain her composure. Do you mean we can do anything if we change location? Marco asked, his voice low and serious. No, that's not it. Let me go please, Sophia urged, attempting to break free from his grasp. Aren't you trying to keep my identity hidden? And now you're... Marco released her abruptly and took a step back. Has Mrs. Jen heard about Romeo's history? He asked calmly. I heard it from the butler, Sophia replied innocently. Then you shouldn't have known this yet. Romeo's birth mother is Sonia Sia, Matthew's fiancé, Marco revealed. Sophia's hand flew to her mouth in shock. How could that be? She exclaimed softly. Isn't the woman who gave birth to Romeo someone who admires you? Why would it be his cousin's wife? Marco and Sophia stood in the washroom, grappling with the weight of the family's hidden turmoil. As this is the Jen family's dirty laundry, outsiders don't know about it, Marco began, his voice tinged with resignation. No matter what, she's my cousin's fiancé. What do you think he's feeling when his fiancé did something like this with his cousin? He asked her. Sophia gasped softly, realizing the implications. He feels cuckolded she exclaimed. Not only did I take away his rights as successor, I cuckolded him as well, wouldn't he want revenge? He asked, his tone heavy with concern. So you're worried that your cousin will hurt me to take revenge on you? Sophia asked, her voice trembling as she tried to grasp the gravity of the situation. And you've been protecting me by hiding my existence from the Jen family? Marco nodded solemnly, his eyes betraying a mix of regret and determination. Then, is Mrs. Jen still blaming me for not bringing you here? He inquired, seeking reassurance from Sophia. Thank you, Sophia said softly, overwhelmed by the protective gesture. She hugged him tightly, seeking comfort in his embrace. But why would you and his fiancé? Sophia started, her gaze searching Marco's face for answers. She lied to both me and Matthew at the same time, Marco explained bitterly, his voice tinged with disbelief. Sophia couldn't help but feel shocked. A person as sharp as Marco got tricked? She thought to herself, her mind racing with the complexities of the situation. Marco Jen's voice carried a weight of melancholy as he shared his past with Sophia in the quiet of the washroom. 
Many years ago, Sonia Sia was my first love, but what I didn't expect was her getting into a relationship with Matthew in secret at the same time. Marco began, his words slow and measured. Sophia listened attentively, her eyes reflecting understanding. Sonia didn't truly love anyone. Her aim was to become the wife of Jian Yi's chairman. Marco continued, his expression clouded with old pain. Back then, the leadership of Jian Yi group was was between Marco and Matthew. The public believed Matthew would likely become the next chairman. Sonia chose to marry Matthew, and they became engaged soon after. Marco recounted, a bitter edge creeping into his tone. After their relationship was exposed, I saw her true intentions, Marco admitted quietly. That revelation, it triggered a psychological condition in me, leaving me unable to be intimate with any woman. Sophia's heart went out to him, realizing the depth of Marco's suffering. Matthew eventually discovered Sonia's betrayal. Marco continued, his voice tightening with unresolved emotions. Their confrontation escalated into a heated argument, which tragically led to Matthew's car accident. What Sonia did not expect was that her plans caused Matthew to lose his chance to become the next chairman of Gen E Group because of his handicap. To continue her dream of being the chairman's wife, Sonia turned her attention to him, and she planned to give birth to Romeo. But how could he possibly accept her? To be the chairman's wife, Sonia betrayed both men, one after another. Then what about Matthew and her? Sophia asked. Their engagement is annulled. Marco informed her. To make the scandal go away, the Jen family announced that Romeo's mother died during childbirth. In fact, she was sent overseas, but she might be coming back very soon. What? She offended the two heirs of Jen E group, and she dares to come back? Sophia asked in amazement. Because of Matthew. Matthew's love for her has reached the stage of an obsession. No matter what she did to him, no matter what she asked from him, he would do it for her, Marco said. That's too, Sophia began, but a knock on the door interrupted their conversation. Miss Tang, are you okay? Did you get a tummy ache? Grandma Jen asked from outside the washroom. It's Roro's grandma, Sophia thought upon hearing the voice. Ah, I'm fine, Mrs. Joan, Sophia replied. Why are you not out after so long? Do you want me to come in and take a look? Grandma Jen asked, about to open the door. No, I'm really fine. I'll be right out after I wash my face, she told her. That's good. I'll go prepare some fruits first, then, Grandma Jen said. Hurry out and eat with the rest of them, Grandma Jen told her. Okay, Mrs. Jen, I'll be right there. You don't have to worry about me. Sophia replied with a heavy sigh of relief. Look at this, you insisted on following me into the washroom. Someone nearly found out about it, Sophia told Marco. Mrs. Jen's eyes are so attractive, Marco said, glaring at Sophia's face. I'm obviously rolling my eyes, okay? She tells him. Yes, the whites of your eyes have a certain flair of their own, he said, flirting with Sophia and causing her to blush. So, Matthew is very dangerous. You have to be careful when talking to him, he warned. Why are you only telling me this now? I don't dare to talk to him anymore, Sophia said, sobbing with a sad look. The wealthy family is a complicated place. If I told you earlier, wouldn't that have scared you away? Marco teased her. I was tricked. Sophia told him, still sobbing. We've been in the washroom for too long. Let's go back quickly, he told her walking up to the door. You can go first. We'll stagger the timing, Sophia said to reduce suspicion. Marco stepped outside. Sophia waited for five minutes before trying to leave the bathroom. Marco is not here, she thought. Has he left already? She said softly as she opened the door slowly. Is Miss Tang going to stay overnight in the washroom? Marco asked suddenly, standing behind the door. Ah, Sophia exclaimed tripping out of fear but being caught by Marco. Thank, thank you, she stuttered, thanking Marco for saving her. Sophia noticed they were not alone. Matthew Jen watched Marco hold her hand, causing her to flinch a bit. Oh no, it's Matthew, she thought as Matthew stared at them with an unfriendly look. A few minutes earlier, at the dining table, Grandma Jen, Little Romeo, Grandpa Jen, and Matthew sat waiting for the others. 
Why is Miss Tang not back after so long? I'll go check on her, Grandma Jian said. Marco also left quite a while ago. Are they related in any way? Matthew thought quietly, his demeanor looking sad. I'm done, he said scornfully, wheeling himself away from the dining table. Moving quietly towards the washroom, Matthew thought, is Miss Tang preparing to stay overnight in the washroom? He heard Sophia scream, prompting him to wheel himself faster. As he appeared before the couple, he saw Marco holding Sophia's hand while she thanked him. He fixed his eyes on them, his expression unfriendly. Marco actually grabbed a woman's hand? That girl looks flustered. Could they be? Matthew thought, observing Sophia's tension as Marco leaned closer, causing her to almost freak out. Marco placed his hand on Sophia's head, rubbing it. Miss Tang is really interesting, Marco said awkwardly, removing his hand. Who? What's so interesting? Sophia asked, surprised at his change of tone. It's a pity. You have no looks, no figure, and no elegance, he told her, appearing uninterested. Are you kidding me? You're the one who touched me out of the blue, and now you're complaining that I'm ugly? Sophia said, confused as he left, muttering something she couldn't hear. Miss Tang, you don't have to stoop to his level. That's his character, Matthew Jen said, catching Sophia's attention. He's allergic to women, and he suddenly found out that he's not allergic to you. That's why he had that reaction earlier, Matthew revealed. What? Sophia exclaimed in disbelief. Could Marco be doing that to put on an act for Matthew? She thought inwardly. Miss Tang, you better go have some fruits quickly, Matthew Jen told her, looking pleased with himself as he wheeled away. Oh okay, Sophia replied, looking at him in awe. If they were really involved with each other, based on Marco's character, he'll definitely try to hide the fact that he has no allergic reaction to Sophia. He'll definitely not show it so easily. Matthew thought as he rolled away from Sophia. It is definitely not a coincidence that Matthew suddenly ran into us. I really have to watch my words and behaviors in the future in case I let the cat out of the bag, Sophia thought as she watched him. Later that night, after dinner, Sophia protested. Yuki, why are you making me come here? I want to go back and accompany Roro. Roro is already sleeping, there's no need to worry. Go in quickly, Yuki said leading her to the front of a room. Marco is chatting in uncle's room now, there's nobody inside, she added, holding Sophia's hand with a smile. Are, are you serious? Mrs. Jen was planning to let you and Marco. Sophia began, before being cut off by Yuki in a friendly way. It's fine. Both she and Roro like you. And Marco is interested in you too, Yuki told her with a grin. I saw everything during dinner, she revealed causing Sophia to say, ah, looking shocked. It's rare that Marco is not allergic to you. You have to take this opportunity. This is the dream in the country. She said, laughing. But you, Sophia began. Enough nonsense. Someone is coming, go in quickly, Yuki said, pushing the confused Sophia into the room as she heard someone approaching. Yuki, what are you doing outside Marco's room? Matthew asked upon seeing her in front of Marco's room, not knowing she had pushed Sophia inside. Yuki grinned. It's nothing. It's just that Mrs. Jen drugged Marco's food, and she wants me to sleep with him tonight, then marry him after the deed is done, she told him. You must not do it. Matthew said immediately, with a fierce look. Why can't I do that? Yuki asked, looking shocked. Matthew froze, looking tense as he gazed at her. You know that he doesn't love you. You won't be happy if you do this, he said, warning her. Yuki's appearance will disrupt Sonia's plans, Matthew thought. Haha, is it any of your business who he loves? Why can he sleep with your fiancé but not me? Yuki asked, folding her arms and looking unconcerned by his words. Yuki, I forbid you from talking to me like this, Matthew Jen said in an ordering tone. Matthew, I also forbid you from talking to me like this. Who are you to me? Yuki asked, her tone a bit harsh. You! Matthew exclaimed. You're the biggest idiot in the world. Sonia obviously betrayed you, and you're still helping her keep an eye on Marco? Did you hit your head on the door or is your head filled with water? Yuki asked, 
placing her hands on his shoulders. Enough. I don't need you to interfere with Sonia's affairs, Matthew said, almost screaming. Yuki watched him with a sad look. Then you'd better watch me closely tonight, otherwise you'll have to call me your cousin's wife tomorrow, she told him, turning to walk into Marco's room. Yuki, you'd better not do anything stupid, Matthew told her, holding her hand to stop her. Yuki hugged him. Actually, if you'd cooperate with me, I won't have to sleep with Marco tonight, she whispered into his ear. Come with me, Yuki said, leading him away. So Yuki loves Matthew, Sophia thought as she listened to their conversation. Who's entering? She wondered as the room door opened with a crack. Mrs. Jen, are you ready? Marco said upon entering the room, unable to hold himself as the drugs began to take effect. Ah! Sophia screamed as she tried to run from him, her face flushed. Sleep, Matthew told Yuki as they moved through the hallway. Suddenly, Yuki rushed and kissed Matthew passionately, then pulled away gently. Matthew, you bastard. You knew that woman only got close to you because of money. You knew she only has eyes for power and fame. Yet you're so madly in love with her, willing to give her everything. Why is she so good? Why won't you take another look at me? Yuki said, falling to her knees and leaning on Matthew's body. Back in Marco's room, Marco held Sophia, unable to control his lust for her. Wait, wait, Yuki was taken to the room by Matthew. Will she be in danger? Sophia asked Marco, looking flustered. She loves Matthew. Whatever she does is voluntary, Marco told her. You knew it. Everything she's doing to help me, you're taking advantage of her. You even let her see you touching me on purpose during dinner. Sophia accused him. I created a chance for her to enter Matthew's room, and she created an opportunity for you to enter my room. How can you say that I'm taking advantage of her? Marco Jen said, holding Sophia's face, causing her to blush even more. But Matthew doesn't love her. That'll hurt her, Sophia said. Mrs. Jen still has the capacity to care about others, I see. Why don't you care about your husband who is drugged, and care about whether you can handle the whole night? Marco said, causing her to freak out. What? The whole night? Sophia said, looking scared. As time passed, they became lost in the moment, with Sophia moaning his name. Later that night, Marco continued, and Sophia pleaded, I really can't take the whole night, please spare me, Mr. Jen. Then let's have some wine and take a break? Marco suggested. Okay, Sophia said. Marco went to the bar and poured himself some wine. Come here, he said, beckoning Sophia as he shook his glass of wine. Sophia got up, looking shy, and covered herself with the bedsheet. Marco gazed at her for a moment. I've already seen Mrs. Jen's body, what's there to hide? What a difficult woman to deal with, he said, holding her hand while she clung to the bedsheet. Do you know the best way to drink wine? He asked her. Feeding each other, Marco said, kissing her as he shared the wine from his mouth with her. Sophia let out a gentle moan. This man, how can he do this, it's embarrassing, she thought. Tonight, I won't spare you even if you kneel down and beg me, he told her as he laid on top of her. Ah, oh, she sighed, unable to resist him as she was flustered and desired his touch. Mrs. Jen is so tasty, he remarked as they continued under the sheets. After a while, Marco called out Sophia's name. Mrs. Jen, hey, he says gently patting her cheek but she doesn't respond. She actually fell asleep, he thought with a confused look. Okay then, he says leaning close to her sleeping together. The next morning, Grandma Jen screams upon seeing them lay on the bed together. Damn kid, you're unbelievable. You actually defiled a good girl like this, she said softly holding her hand against her mouth. He he, see what I mean? I was too kind in the past. As long as I use a stronger drug, even if Marco is allergic to woman, he'll still turn into a beast, she thought grinning to herself. Ah? What's going on so early in the morning, what's wrong? Grandpa Jen exclaimed. Good acting dear. She tells her husband with an okay sign making him smile. Look at what your son did, he actually slept with Yuki, how am I going to explain this to Yuki's parents? Grandma Jen says acting scared as she held her husband's chest. 
this unfilial son. Someone, punish him according to our family's rule. Grandpa Jen said playing along with his wife's act. Mrs. Jen, I don't think that person is me, Yuki said as she stood behind the couples smiling causing them to be shocked as they soon realize she wasn't the one on Marco's bed. What? They both said looking shocked. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Your comments mean the world to us and help us improve. The next episode promises even more excitement and unexpected twists so stay tuned as we embark on this thrilling journey together. Keep the anticipation alive and we'll catch you in the next episode.